Okay. So, uh, in the last class, we had seen the uh, Shanti mantras as well as the initial part where Vajashravasa is holding a homam and he is in the process of giving away his belongings. And then seeing those belongings, certain thoughts occur to his son, Nachiketas, who is standing there. What are those thoughts? Those are going to be said. And that's what we saw in the last mantra. So Amanyata, he was thinking. Nachiketas was thinking. What was he thinking? So that we will go to mantra number three. Please unmute yourself and we will chant. <laughs> Pito Daka Jagdatranaha Pito Daka Jagdatranaha Dugda Doha Nirindriya Dugda Doha Nirindriya Nanda Namate Lokaha so these are the thoughts in the mind of Nachiketas. What are those thoughts? You have to see what is being given away. So that is not mentioned over here. We are going to supply. The cows which his father owns, Vajastravasaha, he owns cows. Those cows are being given as Dakshina to the... Uh... Alkaji, could you please mute your phone? So, those cows are being given away and Nachiketas is watching those cows and these thoughts are occurring to him. Pita Udakaha. These cows have drunk water and you have to supply maybe for the last time. So, they are very old cows. That's what is being, what is being mentioned over here. Cows are very old. Pito Dakaha. They are cows who have drunk water for the last time. The last time you have to supply. Pita Udakaha simply means that it's drunk water. Then, Jagd Trinaha. They have eaten grass also. Again, you have to, you know, supply maybe for the last time. Dugda Dohaha. They have given milk again, perhaps for the last time. So what is it that he is saying? Nirindriyaha. Nirindriya here means that they are not productive cows. They cannot have any more uh, children. No calf can be given to birth by them because they are so old. They have lost the capacity for reproduction. And one of these upcommentators adds over here, Nishphalaha, means even the cow dung is not of a good quality, cannot be used at all. And so, what is in uh, Nachikadasa's mind, that the Dakshina which is being given, the dakshina is defective because the cows are old, right? They're not good dakshinas. So what my father is giving, of course, he's giving away everything that he has. But the point is all the cows are defective. They're all very old. They're of no use to the priests. So then where will my father go to? Te lokaha. So because what is the idea of this homam? It is to get swargaloka, right? So, but because the Dakshina is defective, you know, from a defective cause, you cannot have a good product. So, that is that is the thinking in Nachiketas' mind. 
So he says, my father will go to Te Lokaha, to those places, Nama, Te Lokaha Namaha, those places which are Anandaha, which are called Anandaha. So Ananda is not Ananda. Okay, there's a grammar need. So Ananda is not Anandaha. Nandaha is what? Nanda is a very common girl's name. What does that mean? Happiness or enjoyment. Happiness. Right. Nanda is happiness. And if you remember Bhajagovindam, also we had Nandati, Nandati, Nandati Eva. That, it's, that person is happy. So Anandaha is not happiness. So that is a Te Loka Nama Anandaha means he will go, my father, instead of going to Swarga, will go to those worlds which have no happiness. And Tadadada, giving such cows, Sagachati, my father, will go to those worlds only, Tan, to those worlds only. So Nachikin is worried that, you know, by because of all this uh, defective offerings which my father is giving to the Purohits, the Yajamana is who? My father. And therefore, he will go only to such worlds after death, which is not what he wants, right? He is wanting to go to heaven. Therefore, Nachiketas' thinking is that this Dakshina is improper. Since the Dakshina is defective, the karma itself, the homum home itself is defective. And if the homum is defective, obviously the karma phalam is also going to be defective. So instead of going to Swarga, he will go to Naraka. So this is what is the thinking happening in Nachiketas' mind. Right. And therefore, Lachakitas is a boy who is fond of his father. So he wants to think of some way in which this can be remedied. Okay. Remember that possessions, all the possessions he is giving. That is the idea of uh, the ritual. That whatever possessions you have, you have to give away. You cannot keep back anything. So now, Lachakitas speaks to his father. So we will chant that mantra. Mantra number four. So, please unmute yourself. Sahova Chapitaram Tata. Sahova Chapitaram Tata. As my mom, Dasya Titi. As my mom, Dasya Dvitiyam tritiyam tagam hovacha. Dvitiyam tritiyam tagam hovacha. Vritya vetva dadami ti. Vritya vetva dadami ti. So it is the Vedic chanting of that Vedic pronunciation is tagam because of that particular, uh, you know, that symbol. But when just repeating it, you can say Dhritiyam, Dhritiyam, Tam Hovacha. That is also right. It's basically Anuswara, but it is a Vedic pronunciation indicated by that symbol. Okay. So, Sa Ha Uvacha. So, Uvacha is Sa Ha Uvacha. Sa, who is this? Sa Nachiketas. Uvacha. He said, Ha is only a participle for emphasis or for filling up that, you can, you can say for filling up the meter. So, sa ha uvaja, that Dachiketa said, pitaram iti, to his father, in this manner. Pitaram is the you know, object case, second case. So, he said to his father, iti, in this manner. So, here you can see the word tata. Okay. Now, tata is not the correct word. The correct grammatical word is tata. So, tata means father. Right. But this is uh, chandasya, pra chandasya pra prayoga. That is the, it is, it is the uh, what, what is the usage in the Veda. So you cannot say it is wrong. We accept it because Veda used it. But you understand that tata means tat. Okay, tata has a different meaning in Sanskrit. But here tata means tat father. So hey father, oh father, that is the thing. So read the whole thing together. Sa, ha, oacha, pitramiti. He said to his father in this manner, right? Then inverted commas are opening. Tat, hey father, oh father, kasmai dasyasi mam. 
to whom will you give me? Okay. So, what is his thinking that I am also the possession and therefore I am in decent condition. I am a young boy. So, maybe to def as a remedy for the defective cows which my father is giving, he can give me also as Dakshina. So, he is saying to which of these priests will you give me? To will be you, you offer me to. So, Tat, hey father, Kasmai Dasyasi Maam. How to whom will you give me as Dakshina? You have to add. So his father doesn't answer. Dutiyam. Second time he said, Hey, oh father, whom will you give to me as Dakshina? Again, his father doesn't answer. Tritiyam. A third time he says. So Uvacha. Now you have to say, you have to add over. Vajashravasa Uvacha. His father got irritated, okay, because he's doing something, he's busy. And this young boy is coming and saying, whom are you going to give me to? Right? And not only once, twice and thrice he said it. So, tam ha iti uvacha, to that nachiketas, father said, dadami twa mrityave, I give you to the lord of death, lord Yama. Okay. So, Shankara in his commentary outlines the thinking of nachiketas. He says that because of the deficiency in the health of the cows, now the kids is thinking that the deficiency in the offering may be a deficiency of the yajna also and therefore his father may go to the lower worlds and therefore he should offer himself as Dakshina. All this Shankara outlines in his commentary. Obviously here, Masikita thinks that he is also a property of the parent and therefore he should be given away along with the other possessions. So he asks this question, right? He asks once, gets ignored. Asks twice, gets ignored. And third time he asks, his father gets irritated. So there is a learning from here also, like for us with all our children. Why did the father not answer? Because the father was busy with the arrangements, other arrangements. So he ignored the question, which he should not have done, right? He should simply have said, you know, I'm busy, son. I will talk to you later. So, but he didn't do that. He got angry afterwards. Now, when the father said, I give you to the Lord of Death, who is the Lord of Death? Yamaraja is also one of the Devatas for Nachiketas. And Nachiketas didn't understand that his father was angry. So, he took it seriously. And you have to supply on this. He went, he left the Yagashala and went back to his room to get ready to pack his bags and all that and go to Yama. Right. So Shankara adds a commentary here. He says, having heard these words of his father, Natiketas went to a secluded place and started thinking. What was he thinking? That is mentioned in the next mantra, which we will chant. So please unmute yourself. We will chant the next mantra. Bahunami Ami Prathamaha. Bahunami Ami Prathamaha. Bahunami Ami Madhyamaha. Bahunami Ami Madhyamaha. Kim Swidat Kim Swidhamasya Kartavyam. Kim Swidhamasya Kartavyam. Kim Svidhamasya Kartavyam. Kim Svidhamasya Kartavyam. Yanmayadya Karishyati. Yanmayadya Karishyati. Okay. So, what is he doing? You know, Shikidas is doing a self-assessment. Like, what kind of a student am I? And Shastra defines three types of students. It's a very nice definition. So I'll put this up in the in the in the group afterwards, but I'll just chant it out just now. It says Uttama Chintitam Kuryat Prokta Karitu Madhyama Yo Naiva Kuryat Ubhayam Sahasishya Hi Adhamo Mataha. You can understand Uttama. Chintitam Kurya. What is Chintitam? Thinking. 
right? So the one who understands the teacher's thinking. So, Uttama is the classification of the student. Uttama Shishya, the best type of student, is one Chintitam, who understands the teacher's thinking, the teacher's intentions, and without the teacher having to spell it out, Puriyat. He carries out those instructions. So one, the, the student who understands the teacher's intention, thinking, and carries out those instructions without the teacher actually having to utter the words, he is the best student, Uttama student. Then, Prokta Karitu Madhyamaha, Proktaha, the teacher has given spoken instructions. Karituhu, one who carries out those spoken instructions, Madhyamaha, he is the Student in the middle category. Then, yo naiva kuriyat ubhayam. The one who does not carry out either of them, either the intention, intention or obey the spoken instruction. Saha sishyaha hi adhamoma. He is the adhama sishya. He is a student of the lowest category. Right. So, this is this categorization of students by Shastram. So, what is our friend doing? What is Nachiketa doing? He says, Bahunam Emi Prathamha. So, he is doing an analysis. Among many, many types of, many, many students, I am the first. Right? But, Bahunam Emi Madhyama also. But there are many students among whom I am Average, I am in the middle. Among some students, I am the best. But there are many other students among which I am the middle also. It is not that, you know, I am the best of all students. He is being modest. There are many students better than me also. And I am better than many students also. Therefore, since this being so, he says, Kim Kartavyam Yamasya Yat Karishyati. Maya Adhya. Maya Adhya means through me, yet karishyati, what will my what work will my father accomplish for Lord Yama by giving me to him? So he is thinking, my father is giving me to Lord Yama. But I am not the you know topmost of all students. There are students who are good, whom I am better than. But there are students who are better than me also. So he is wondering, giving me to Lord Yama, after all, Lord Yama is a Lord, right? What possible use could the father have for me? What possible work does my father think that I will do for him by going to Lord Yama, right? So the idea is, would I have been a better Dakshina for my look for the local priest, or am I a better Dakshina for Lord Yama? But father has spoken, father has given instructions. So he decides to obey his father. He goes and packs his bag. In those days you have bags, bags, bag, bags to pack. Yeah. And then goes to the Homa Shala, the Yaga Shala, where the father is busy with his, giving his uh, possessions away. And he goes to say goodbye to his father. Right. So Shankara notes in this notes here as an introduction to the next mantra that by this time the father's anger has worn off. Obviously because of just an irritation, irritated mood that he said it and he's already regretting his words. Right? And so he's thinking, you know, what did I say to my son in anger now? Because if my son actually goes, you know, then a trip to Lord Emma is what is usually only a one-way ticket. So when Nachiketa walks in, his father explains that, you know, you know, you irritated me and I was just angry. It's not that I really meant it. So he says that uh, I am going to recall my words, you know. And that's a very nice facility in Gmail, incidentally, recently introduced. You can recall, recall a mail. Uh, in, after sending it, you can recall a mail in a few minutes. I don't know if you're aware. right? So that facility is available in Gmail, but you know, here, uh, the idea of a person going back on his words 
was uh, not very well looked upon in the old days. So Nachiketa spoke to his father. His father had, was seeing that Nachiketa was all ready to go. And then his father tried, tried his best to persuade him not to go by saying that I was angry and I didn't really mean it. But Nachiketa thinks, you know, my father is a very upright person and uh, I should not make him break his words. So that is the background to the next mantra which Shankara gives. We will chant the next mantra, sixth mantra. Anupashya yatha purve Anupashya yatha purve Pratipashya tatha pare Sasyamiva martyaf pachyate Sasyamiva martyaf pachyate Sasyamiva jayate punaha Sasyamiva jayate punaha Okay, so Anupashya he is speaking to his father. This is Nachiketa's words to his father. Anupasya, O oh father, see carefully Yatha Purve, how our ancestors lived. You supply how ancestors lived and you know how they never went back on their words. He is trying to remind his father that you cannot go back on your words because your ancestors never did. They were always true to their words. Therefore, Anupasya Yatha Purve, your ancestors always observed their words. And Tatha also Pratipashya. Again, see, Apare. Apare means not the ancestors, means those who are today alive, your uh, contemporaries who are alive today, they also don't go back on their words. Okay, so this line basically means that neither your ancestors nor, nor your contemporaries today are going back on their words. There is integrity of thought word and deed. What is that called? Arjavam. Arjavam. So he is reminding his father that Arjavam is a very, very important virtue. And then he says, Hey father, Martyaha Pachyate. The human being, the body, it dies. Martyaha. And Pachyate. Pachyate means it matures, gets old and then dies also. How? Sasyam eva, like a plant. So he is giving the reference of a plant. It is just as a plant gets old and dies. Similarly, the human body also gets old and dies. And not only that, O oh Father, Punaha Jayate, that plant is born again after dying. Similarly, this body also is born again. Okay. Now, if you look at this particular mantra, Upanishad is not giving very great you know, details of the story. So you have to fill it up with your imagination. What do you do? You say he went to his father and said you know, I am going to Lord Yama and his father said, no, no, no I didn't mean it. You need not go to Yama, Raja but then Chikit is pointing out that his father is violating his words and that that is a sin. Vakya Paripalanam it is called going by your words. And this is all being described in this mantra and he is appealing to his father's honor. Right? He is saying the same argument actually which Krishna used to Arjuna. One of the arguments Krishna used was that by running away you will bring shame to your family and the Kshatriyas. Right? So here also he is saying father by breaking your words you will bring shame to the entire ancestors which we have. And the people who are today also will laugh at you. Right, and so here Shankara very carefully adds a commentary. Comment, comment. He says that by violating your words, you know, nobody has ever become free from old age or mortality. So he's linking this first line and the second line. The first line is what that your people have never violated words. And second line is what that. Everybody will die, right? Just like plants. 
So Shankara adds a very nice comment linking these two lines. He says that by violating your words, you cannot become free from mortality or from old age. And therefore, for this temporary life, why should you sacrifice your dharma? Why should you break your words? After all these arguments, now it's not mentioned there again, so we have to supply. Vajrasrava says, okay, fine. You know, since you have been so persuasive, you go. You go to Lord Yama. Now the question is, how does he go to Lord Yama? Because Lord Yama, you cannot go to in your human body. And therefore, Shankara, of course, doesn't comment on this. The mantra doesn't comment on this. One of the sub-commentators adds that because of this great bhakti for his father, Pitra Bhakti, which Natsikitas was showing, by how? By obeying, obeying those instructions and going to Lord Yama. Because of the special and very deep Pitra Bhakti which he was showing, Nachiketas was granted a special power by Ishwara that he could travel to Yamaloka in his human body. There is nothing in the Upanishad to indicate this. This is a comment by the sub-commentator. It is just so that nobody asks, you know, how did he go? You have to leave your body behind on earth when you go normally. So just to obviate that. Right. And how do we know that he went in with his human body? What is the story? Because he comes back also, right? He doesn't stay there. He comes back also. Therefore, obviously, he went only with his human body. So that is what is being said over here. And again, you know, if, if you look at the next uh, mantra, it is the scene has changed. The next mantra is in Yamaloka. So, there is no connecting mantra between the two. So, Shankara supplies in his commentary that Nachiketas Yama Bhavanam Gatva, he went to Yama's palace. And what did he discover when he went to Yama's palace? He discovered that Yama, Lord Yama was not there. So, Lord Yama had gone out. And what does Lord Yama go to go out for? To get one of us. Get one of us. He has to collect jivas. That is his job, right? So he, he's gone out to finish his job. And therefore, what happened? Again, Shankara supplies. Kisro Ratri Uvasaha. This uh, Nachiketas, he sat there for three days and three nights. He mentions three nights, so obviously it means three days. Nachiketas sat outside Yama's palace for three nights. And he sat outside without eating. Okay. So this is the background. And then he says, uh, Shankara himself says, after three days and three nights, Yamaraj returned. Okay. Now we will read the next mantra, which is mantra number seven. All this background is to supply. Otherwise, you know, you wonder how from the Yaga Shala suddenly the scene has changed. So we have mantra number seven. It's seven o'clock. Vaishvanara Pravishati Vaishvanara Pravishati Atithi Brahmano Grahan Atithi Brahmano Grahan Asetam Shantim Kurvanti Asetam Shantim Kurvanti Aravai Vasato Dakam Okay. So remember that Nachiketas is now outside Lord Yama's palace and he finds that Lord Yama is not there. And then a lot of things we have to know. If Lord Yama is not there, that means only the ladies and children were there, right? The ladies of the house were children were out there. And one of the rules in our Dharma Shastram is that you, a male, should not enter the ho another house if the other, if the male of that house is not present. If there are only ladies in the house, Dharma Shastram says that a, a, a man must not enter, right, until the other man has come back. So that's the background you must understand over here. That is why Nachiketas 
waits outside for three days. Now you may say that, why did he not enter? Because the ladies would have known who he is and they would have invited him. So all that you have to supply. The ladies went out and said, please come in and wash, we'll wash your legs and give you food and give you water and all that. But Nachiketas was aware of Dharma Shastram. He knew that he should not enter the house until Lord Yama came back and therefore he did not enter the house. Okay. So, no food and no water. Now, the point is, you can ask question. He didn't enter the house fine, right? Why did the ladies not go out and give him some water? What would be the answer? Or food? You have to know the Indian culture for this. What is the reason? Uh, a guest is entertained inside the house and Bhiksha is the one which is given outside. Very good. So if you give food and water outside, you are telling that, you are saying that Nachiketa, you are a beggar. I am giving you Bhiksha. Right? So they did not do that. They were also aware of Dharma Shastram. They did not do that. So Nachiketa sat for three days and three nights with no food and no water. So the rules of Atiti Devo Bhavaha had been violated. Right? Dharma Shastra says, Atiti Devo Bhavaha. We have seen this where, we will see this in Taitri Upanishad. Atiti Devo Bhava. The Lord, the guest should be treated just as the Lord. Right? Now again, why did, you know, Nachiketas not go and stay in a hotel? So you can ask all these questions. In those days, remember that the concept of hotels and restaurants were not there because it was considered a papam to sell food or water. Okay, It was considered a sin to sell food, food and water. Therefore, there were no hotels and no restaurants. And that is why the definition of Atiti is there. Who would be a normal guest? Somebody who is going traveling. A traveler would be a normal guest. He would come and he would, like, he's, let us say, somebody's traveling from town A to town B. And in a place, he comes to a village and it is night. So he still has to travel. So the, I, the usual Dharma Shastra rule is that you can go to any house and ask for shelter for the night. And then that house cannot say no. And they will give food and water and shelter for the night. That is the very definition of, other, of an atithi. Navidyate dvitiya tithi yasya iti atithi. Navidyate dvitiya tithi. The one who should not stay for a second tithi, stay for a second night, he is atithi. Right? Atithi basically by definition is a person who may or may not be known to you. But he comes, he stays on his way in doing something else, for doing something else. He stays for one night and goes away. Right? So, this refusal by Natsiketas to enter the house is in violation of this Atiti Dharmaha. And therefore, the ladies of the house are very disturbed. And therefore, this mantra, mantra number seven, which we just chanted, it is basically ladies uvacha or Yama's wife uvacha to whom to Yama who has come back. So, he says, Brahmana Atithi Graham Pavishati. So this Brahman, this Brahmin, Brahmin is one who learned in the scriptures. So this Brahmin who is a learned guest has Graham Pravishati has entered the house. And as a guest, he deserves to be honored. As a Brahmin, he deserves honor. And when a Brahmin enters the house, Vaishvanaraha Pravishati. Vaishvanaraha is who? Uh, Agni Devata. Agni Devata, right. So when the Brahmin enters the house, Vaishvanaraha Pravati, Pravishati. It is as if Agni Devata has entered the house. Now, what is the significance of saying that Agni Devata has entered the house? Can you guess? Oh, Brahmin does the 
we need Samajha? to be careful of agni always because it can uh, destroy he he well, does the fire rituals or rather when agni enters your house what should you do should do it Water. Take immediate steps, right? You should Take douse immediate it. steps. You douse should douse it. it. Yeah. Right? And that is why when a guest enters the house in India today, at least most of India, not in, especially in Gujarat and all, when a guest, the first thing is you offer water. Right? As a mark of respect. And believe me, in Gujarat, even today, if you enter a house and somebody gives water and you say, I don't want, it's an insult. So they take it very badly. So this is the tradition. That when Agni enters the house, please immediately douse it. <laughs> Otherwise, it will consume the house. And similarly, the Brahmin, when he enters the house, if you don't treat with proper respect, then that anger of the Brahmin will consume the house. And therefore, Shantim Kurvanti, when the Brahmin enters the house, you have to you know, please him by offering drinking water and then food and all that. So this is the this is the uh, prelude. This is what Lord Yama's wife is saying that when a Brahmin enters the house, you should immediately give him water because a Brahmin entering the house is like Agni Devata entering the house, and the same destruction which is possible for Agni Devata to carry out if you don't treat it properly is possible if. You don't treat a guest properly, a Brahmin guest properly. This is the Hetu, the reason because of which the next line is there. Next line is what? He Vaivasata. Vaivasata is what? Vaivasata means son of Vivaswan. Vivaswan is who? Surya. God. Surya Devata. Now, Vivas, vivaha means energy. Okay, so so vis, vivaswan means the one who gives the energy, and that's why Surya Devata. And this is an interesting reason. Why is you know Lord Yama considered the son of Surya or Surya Devata? So the commentators and all these are very important, very interesting things. Commentators give the give the reason. They say, what does Lord Yama represent? Yama represents Kalaha, Kala. the time, time principle. How do we count time, sunrise and sunset? The sun is involved. Therefore, sun is the father and Kalaha becomes the son. And Yama is none other than Kalaha. Therefore, Yama is referred to as Surya Putra. Okay, so Vivaswan, Vivaswataha. Yes the son of the sun god, hey Lord Yama, his wife is saying, Udakam Hara, please go and bring the water. Get the water immediately. Remember that the ladies already invited him and he has said no. So the ladies think that we should not go again and do it because he might get angry with us. So Lord Yama, since you, you are the fellow who created this whole problem, you know, by not being here when he arrived, you sort it out. Like most wives say these things, nah? you created the problem, you sort it out. So this is, Lord Yama's wife is not different. So you, you go and sort it out. You get the water and you come. Odakam hara. Okay. So now we go to the next mantra. Mantra number eight. Asha pratikshe sangatam sunurtam cha. ृंगते पुषस्यालमेधस ्राह्मणो गृहे अगेन दिस इज दि यमा वाइफ और वाइफ एड्रेसिंग 
M. Raja. And these words again talk about the importance of respecting a guest. So, you know, again, it is a simple lady's problem. You are mad you are made a mistake. You are the person responsible. You go and set it out right. So, he's saying, Asha Pratikshe, hopes and expectations. Sangatam. So, Sangatam is uh, satsang. So, he's saying that all the hopes and expectations which are in the which are expected from going to a satsang. What happens when you go to a satsang? You get punyam. So all those hopes and expectations and all the sunratam, noble speeches, ishtapurte. Ishtapurte, rituals and services. And you have to supply to each of these, punyam from. So punyam from uh, all you know, satsangs, punyam from all noble words, Punyam from all Ishtapurte, all the rituals and services. And Sarvan Putranscha, all children and cattle also. Etat Brahmanaha Vrante. This Brahmin guest can destroy. Right? Why? If he has been dishonored. So all the Punyam from all these, uh, all these uh, you know, activities, as well, as well as all your children and all your wealth. Cattle here represents wealth. All your wealth also. This guest can destroy. Why? Alpa medhasya purushasya. Because you, O Yamaraja, Alpa medhasya purushasya are a person with not much intelligence. Alpa medhaha, little brains. Purushasya, he is referring to Lord Yamara. Because you, O Lord Yama, are a person who is an unintelligent host. Because you were not here when you are. Guest came. And not only that, Ashnan Vasati. He has sat without eating or drinking. Therefore, such a Brahmin guest who was not honored and indeed dishonored by your not being here and by not, not serving food and drink for three days, such a guest can destroy everything. His anger can destroy all this. Right? So, all Asha Pratikse means all the hopes and expectations that we have for the future. Right, and all the punyam which arose from all the satsangs, all the activities which we have done, from all the holy words, sunrasam, holy words, mangalavakyams, all this will also be destroyed. Right, remember that you have to be very careful about all this. Whatever you do, whatever punyam you generate, can be destroyed in a minute by a action which is against the Shastra. That is what is being said. Not only that, all the Punyam born from Ishta and Purte. Right? Ishta, ishta means all uh, Punyam born, born from... See, Ishta Purte is a word which you will come across many times, so you should know the meaning. Ishtam is from the, uh, the root Yaj, which means Yagaha, Yagnya. Right? So, Ishtam is Yagajam Halam. That punyam which is born out of performance of yagnyas. And therefore, you can take it the ishtam as all karma which is mandated by Shastra. So, all punyam born out of Shastric mandated karma is ishtam. While purtam is a word used for service oriented activities. Jan Kalyan, you know, for the, for, the, for the benefit of the society like building hospitals, schools, looking after old people, old age homes, all this purtam. All, the, all of these generate punyam. So he says all this punyam will also be destroyed. Not only that, sarvan putra pasun, this anger of this guest, it will harm the children also and the property also. Therefore, what is the final essence of this? Hey, Yamraj, get up, go and rush and give water to the guest so that he will be honored as he deserves to be honored. So, okay. Any questions so far? It's all a story only. But uh, what is I being indicated it's... is... Yeah, please go on. Uh, it's a very simple thing. He was just a boy. He was not a man, grown-up man. Couldn't he be invited inside the house? I mean, I know the story yet, I'm asking. Well, Shastra, we cannot say why 
you okay. know, this okay. is being done. Okay. Okay. So you can, if you want to take it as representative of this of the shastra, you can think of him as a grown up. But he, if, if as you will see from the uh, dialogue which goes on, his body may have been that of a boy, but his mind is very mature. You know. Yeah. There's no answer yeah, to the good. question actually. Was really yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now you look at mantra number nine. Mm -hmm. Oh, sir, just another one, another question. Yes, so, yeah. um, so the men will go out to work, right? So how is like falling upon Yamaraja so badly? Beg your pardon? So the men will go out and work. So why yeah. is it falling upon Yamaraja so badly that you know he was not there and because of his not being Because there, that is so your, uh, you know, your Atiti, atiti Dharma. When a guest comes, the host should be there at this event. No, but it's un uninvited, na? So how does the host know it that? It is uninvited there? always. That's what that's the that's the definition I gave. Na dwiti ya tithi iti atithi. It's not like the guest of today who sends you an email or a cell phone, cell phone message and says, "I'm coming." Those people were people who were passing through. Unexpected guests. Na dwiti ya tithi, the one who will not stay for a second day. Because he's looking only for shelter for one day. Anyway, the point is that we have to look at the Tatparyam of the story. What is the Tatparyam of the story? That Atiti, or on, on Atiti Dharma was violated. Okay? And that's where all this comes from. The whole story develops around that. So, what you all are doing is, you know, typically, I give an example sometime back. Supposing you are in a, you know, you are in a, you know, class and someone tells you okay you know i if one car costs 10000 rupees how much will five cars cost what is the answer 50000 50000 but you get up and say no 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 which car today costs less than 5 lakhs what have you missed tatpariyam you have missed the Tatparyam. So the Tatparyam of the story you are missing by asking questions like, you know, why can't we be said <laughs> He's only a small boy. It's violative of the Tatparyam. You have to focus on the Tatparyam, the essential part of it. And that's the essential understanding in all Shastra teaching. Focus on the essence. It's like eating uh, Ganneka juice. You know, you chew and chew and chew the sugar cane. But ultimately, what do you do? You throw away the non-essentials. And that is exactly what you got to do here. Extract the essential and throw the non-essentials. Okay, mantra uh, number nine. Yes, Prabhuji? Natraji. Sorry. Hi, yeah. Can we maybe interpret it that, um, you know, Nachiketa came with a particular mission in mind and uh, did not want to get... He, his mission was to meet Lord Yama. Yeah. So he was committed to that. He didn't want to get distracted with uh, all the household things that are going on there. So that was his mission. He wasn't there to get entertained or anything like that. His his thing was to meet Lord Yama, which is his promise. And that's what he stuck mm, to, basically. Yes, Tetraji. But the point is, because of this, uh, what you call, last mantra, which talked about violation of the dharma due to a guest. Yes. What happens because of that? Because Yamaraj now feels that he is on the back foot. Sure. And since since water and food have not been served, he has to give something extra. That's where the whole sure. story begins. Correct. But this this injunction or this reprimand is not directed to Nachiketa, it's directed to Lord Yama. Now he's he's arrived and he's kind of trying to pass it off to his uh, his uh, wife and other people in the house. Why didn't you manage it or why don't you do something about it? But they're reminding him, no, it's actually yeah. your duty, and you have to, you have to make up for it. It's not yeah, for us yeah. to make up for it. Exactly. They said that we can't do it because he has not violated Dharma Shastra. He didn't enter the house because you were not there. Yeah, but that was his choice, actually, presumably. Presumably, is not choice. Dharma Shastra choice. Dharma Shastra says you cannot enter. Right. Doesn't give you a choice. Okay. Okay. But as somebody else said, you know, he's only nine year old or ten year old. How does it matter? Yeah. 
So all those arguments can be used. Yes. Okay. I agree with okay. you. Thank you. Okay. Now we look at mantra number nine. We chant. Tisro Ratri Yadavasi Grahame. Tisro Ratri Yadavasi Grahame. Anashtan Brahmana Brahmana Atishthit Atitir Namasya. Anashtan Brahmana Atishthit Namasya. Namaste to Brahmana Swati Mestu. Namaste to Brahmana Swati Mestu. Asmat Prati Trinvaran Vrinishva. So this is, uh, you have to again supply. So Lord Yama went to the fridge, got his cold water and then went. And he says, Hey Brahmanaha, O Brahmanaha, Yad Avatthisi, you have stayed, Megrahe, in my house, Tisra Ratrihi, for three nights, Anashnan without eating and drinking, namaha astu te, te namaha astu, he rasiketas, he brahman, he brahmin, I am saluting you, te namaha astu, let there be salutations to you from me, and astu swastihi, let there be a wish that you be well, swastihi astu, well-being from me, and tasmat, therefore, ranishva, choose, Threen Varan Prati. Choose three boons for one for each night. Right? So as, as we have said, we have to have a slightly vivid imagination over here. So Lord Yama went and got bought water, did Pada Puja, Tanchiketas, offered some food, Tanchiketas eating and drinking water. And then Yamraj is apologizing and he offers him the Namaskara, which is by way of apology. And says this namaskara is not sufficient, and therefore one boon for each day I am offering you. Oh, because you sat in my outside my palace for three nights without taking food, therefore it's a mistake on my part. I should have come back earlier, and therefore I have apologized. Okay, so here nothing much is mentioned, it's just an apology and an offering for three boons to take any three boons. Now remember that this offering of three boons is the critical part of this story. Why did Yamaraja offer three boons? And out of the three boons, the entire story emerges. So that we have to remember. Okay. So we will see if we can finish one more mantra. We will chant. Shanta Sankalpa Sumuna Yathasya. Shanta Sankalpa Sumuna Yathasya. Vita Manur Gotamo Mahimrityo. Vita Manur Gotamo Mahimrityo. What was a stum Mahi Vadet Pratita? So she says this is Nachiketa Ovacha. Look, it's not given over here, you have to supply. Nachiketa Ovacha. In reply to Lord Yamaji, Nachiketa is asking. He, Gautama Santa Sankalpa Syat. Me Gautama, and remember I told you that Rajasravaha, another name is Gautama. So he's saying, May my father Chanta Sankalpa Syat be free from Sankalpaha, from mental disturbances, what caused by the argument which he had with me and by my going away. And Shantaha Syat, may he be peaceful. And Vita Manuhu Mabhi. Manuhu is another name for anger. Vita Manuhu means free from anger. 
So ma bihi, towards me, let my father not have anger. Sumana ma bihi, let his mind be calm and free. So sumana here is a prasanna manasaha, mind just calm where there are no worries. And then, very critical word he says, Tvat Pratishtam Maam. After being released by you, after coming away from Yama's house, that's a very nice word. By saying that, he has not asked a boon, okay? Because this is not his boon. What is the boon? The boon is, let my father's mind be calm. And then this is, after being released from you, I will go back to my father and Pratitaha mom, let him recognize me. Okay. So here, why should he say that let him recognize me? So there's a very implicit understanding here that the rate at which time passes is different in different lokas. So there's an implication here that three days in Yamaloka maybe several years on earth, on Bhuloka. So the idea is, may my father not have forgotten me. Right? And subcommentators right over here that since normally a person who goes to Yamaloka does not come back, what Nachiketas wanted to say was, my father should not think I am a ghost coming back from Yamaraj. Okay? And what should he do? Ma abhi He should talk to me. He should welcome me. Etat prayanam prathamam varam vrane. Etat. This is singular. It's a singular. Etat. This prathamam varam vrane is the first, I, first boon I choose. Trayanam. Among the three booms that you have given me. Right? So, here remember that by the usage of this, Nachiketa is showing how smart he is. He is saying this is one, etat, one of the boons. And thereby he is making a very clear uh, you know, note to Yamaraja that the Shanta Sankalpa, Sumanaha, Vita Manyu, don't count it as three different boons. They are all part of the first boon, O Yamaraja. Therefore, I still got two more boons left. Right? And Yamaraja says, Okay, fine. Whatever you have said is done. So the next mantra is basically Mrityuhu Uvacha, Yama's reply. And Nataraji, he also made sure that he is going back, certainly. He also made sure that he is going back. That also, he says, is not part of the boon. So in one boon, he has hidden four or five things. So that's what comes when you have got a bright brain. And Yamaraja says, fine. What Yamaraja says, we will see in the next session. Any questions? Okay. Om Purnamaram Purnamidam Purnamaram Purnamaram Thank you, 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 Thank you,